pray for the mom right now and ask God for supernatural blessing. God, it's hard to be a parent in these last days. So God, I ask you that we all get involved. We'll help. We want to be a support to Remy. We want to help raise Julie. Lord, I ask you now to give her supernatural financial favor. In the name of I pray for all the parents. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody give God praise all over the house for Julian. Look at him, boy. I, I, at least I'm trying to hold him. Let me try to. I got to hold him. Oh, I, look, I looked like that this morning when I was waking up. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that, Ron. Look at that. Look at that smile. Can y'all get a, can they, are they, can they get a, you want to get a good picture? Get a good picture of them. Come up here. Get a good one. Look how cute he is. You getting a good one? Can they see it on the internet? He's the new superstar right here. Look at his socks. Gucci, Gucci. Oh, God, if I could sleep like that now, I'd be so happy. <laughs> Look, he's being so he's being so good, isn't he? Didn't mean to know. <laughs> Dennis is a good isn't Dennis a good man. He, he he does so much work here. Hallelujah. Wow, I love babies. We have a certificate for for Julian, and and I signed it, and Mama has signed it. And we have a Bible coming. Can you believe the bookstore is out of baby Bibles? But we ordered him a nice blue Bible. Then we'll sign it and give it to him. So if your ushers will get the uh, ushers, pass out. Everybody put, uh, did they do it already? Well, they didn't come get mine. I guess y'all don't want me to bless the baby. I just get, I just, do they get it? Come get it. Come get it. You got it? Well, give God praise. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. Put mine in there. Hallelujah. Let me help y'all down a little. So used to it, ain't you? A couple of things, man. We want to get right into the Word today and talk to you a little bit about what God's been teaching me, and uh, it's been very, uh, very sober in what I've been studying, uh, uh, and very shocking. I've been very shocked over it, very sober. But a couple of things I do want to now, uh, tell you about. Number one. Uh, we started, I don't know if you drove up, if you can't read the sign, then it was, that's not the ministry for you, but we got the, the uh, Spanish sign up for the bilingual service. How many of you got to see it sitting out there? We got some more signs coming around. We got some flyers going out. What I really need is if you, if you are bilingual, if you, you can speak English and Spanish uh, very well, I need you to help me out. I need you to sign up, and we can get some rotations uh, because we need more than just translators. We need people to be able to work the table. Uh, we need some greeters that are also help out and ushers that are also help out that are bilingual. So we need you to sign up. And if you know people that uh, are wanting to help in the Spanish ministry that you know are good, godly people, get them to come over here because we really want to build this ministry. And I think it's a needed ministry in Hickory, North Carolina. And what we're preaching right now is pretty powerful in kingdom. We preach all everything we preach powerful. And so... Uh, Look at somebody and say, we need your help. Yeah, so, and also, we got new things coming. I'm excited. In about three weeks, we got a whole new Favor Center app fixing to be promoted on iTunes and uh, on Android. So you get a whole church app. So wherever you go, you can take the church with you and hit live and watch us anywhere you want around the world. Ain't that be awesome? Or a prayer request or a memo. And then I'm excited this Thursday we leave to go to our men's retreat. Almost 88 men, probably almost have 100 men that's going to be there. As we pray and anoint Friday night men, we're going to pray for an Issachar anointing on every man connected into this church and to the churches that are represented. About four churches that are represented, right, Ron? And we're going to pray. It. We're taking our oil from Ghana that's been prayed over. And we're going to pray over every man Friday night and ask for the Issachar anointing. The wealthiest tribe of Israel was the Issachar tribe. How many want your men to come back with the wealth anointing on their forehead? Somebody say amen. I guess four or five of you didn't sit, don't want your, kid, your man to come back wealthy, so we're going to let him stay broke 
and put the double wealth on somebody else. How many want your men to come back wealthy in Jesus' name? Oh, y'all going to be a tough crowd for me today. I see, I see, I see. And then we're going to pray also the Issachar anointing. They weren't just the wealthiest tribe. The Bible said they were people who discerned what time or the time it was in, in the kingdom of God. So we want our men to come back and know exactly what. And, and the Bible said they also understood what God was doing. And we need more than we ever needed than we need now. Men and women who know what God is doing and is not afraid to follow God. Amen. Jesus name. So I want to talk to you today about uh, what shall the end be. We started a series last Sunday. I am very uh, uh, aware of what's going on. So, uh oh, somebody didn't fall on the end of the uh, screen. I want to make a couple of disclaimers before we get started. Uh, I, I, I want to. We're going to give you some facts. What I'm giving you is stuff that's going on you need to go home and do your own research uh, I'm not going to uh, try to tell you that there's a rapture exact date of the rapture but I want you to know the Bible did say and Jesus did say that thou would know the signs of the times look at somebody say you in the right time right now and I don't know about you but I try to give up all my sinly passions right now because the more I've been studying I was uh, stu listening and studying uh, the other day, and I just started crying uh, because I started thinking, Lord, you could come back right now. And the first thing that came over me was my daughter. I said, oh, God, I don't want to leave my daughter or anybody I know here on the earth for this great tribulation, for the Jacob's trouble. I don't want to be left here for it. I definitely don't want anybody I know to be left for it. And if there's ever going to be a time that you shift back into an evangelistic mindset, it should be right now. We're living on that preface Second thing, another thing I want to tell you, kind of so you'll get it in your spirit, uh, when we talk about these things, you're going to feel fear, okay? Look at somebody say, it's true, fear is real. Now, I was sitting in my office and I was studying, and I said, Lord, it makes me, I'm getting a, fr I, I, I said, Lord, this puts fear in me. Uh, it, this, talking like this puts fear in me. And waiting for the Holy Spirit to comfort me, the Holy Spirit said to me, good, you better be very afraid. And I thought, well, you're not going to get rid of fear? He said, no. You better face your fear, and you better know your fear is going to drive you to be cautious on how you live. And then he said some things to me, and I want to start with this just so you'll have a clarity. He said this to me. He said, you've got to remember that I am not a man. Numbers 23, 19 says, I am not a man, so I do not have a conscience. He said, I want you to be very specific and clear that you understand what kind of God I am. I am, I, I am a God of love. I created love, okay? Love is not a feeling. Love is a creation. I understand love more than any human on the earth because I invented, created, and made the word love. And love is not what you feel. Love is loyalty. Love is a decision. He said, but I'm not a man. I'm not human. And he said, the most dangerous thing you've done in the church age is you've tried to reduce me into a human theology or into a human feeling, into a human picture where you think that I am like you. I am not like you. You are made in a little fragment like me. He said, and so that I don't have a conscience, I don't. I don't regret because I don't make decisions based on how I feel. I make decisions based on a plan. So then he said, so fear is normal. You better be afraid. Another thing he said, he said, you need to understand the kingdom of God and how it operates. It doesn't operate as it loves humans. We are arrogant people. I want you to look at somebody and say, you are very arrogant. And if you're married to it, you have my permission to look at your spouse right now and say, I don't care what you say, you're very arrogant. We are arrogant as a species. We are very prideful and we are very uh, Luciferianistic in our ways, okay? And I don't care how you try to act more holier now. You, uh, the more you try to act like you holy, the more Luciferianistic you act, okay? Because until you realize without the grace of God, all of us would fall and go straight to hell, right? And so we all make mistakes. We're all failures. We're all uh, messing up. But God said, you have to be very cautious to understand how does the kingdom operate. And I said, well, how does it? He says, angels do not love you. He said, angels don't walk around with some overflowing love for you. Angels aren't trying to get in your presence. Angel, let, me, let, let, me, let me help you out here. You are not so wonderful in your worship that angels want to hang out at your house. 
okay? That's how you try to feel. Angels ain't trying to get to your house, and angels ain't trying to hang out with you. If an angel shows up, it's because somebody assigned him there who loves you. That's why if you ever read Exodus 20, I believe it's Exodus 23, and, 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 and I, I'm just trying to build my foundation here because I, I really want you to, to see that you, you need to really make sure that you don't get so uh, proud of yourself. But if you read Exodus, Exodus 23, God sends an angel in Exodus, and he, he's sending his, these are his people now, and he's brought them out of a deliverance, uh, Exodus 23, verse 20. And, and so he's bringing them out of deliverance. He's bringing them out of Pharaoh. But he says, behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the what? He said, behold, I send an angel to keep you in the, and to bring you into the, which I have. So angels are not asking God to get in your presence, okay? I don't know where we got that theology, like, oh, angels are everywhere. No, no, no. The Bible says you entertain them unaware, but that's not just angels. That's a whole other immortality race and a whole other dimension that is sitting in this room right now. The watchers, the Bible calls the book of Enoch, calls them the watchers, the Septuagint. What is the Septuagint? It's the first translated book. That, uh, it's the first book. It's the book that Jesus preached out of. It's the Greek translation of the Old Testament that they had in the first church, uh, the translation 1611 comes out of the Septuagint. But he said, behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way. So what? if an angel shows up, what's his job? What's the angel's job? The angel's job is to keep you in the way. What else is his job? To bring you into the place which I have. So if an angel shows up, he has the plan for you, and he's going to protect you because somebody signed. But here's what gets me, the next verse. The next verse, God becomes very, he tells Moses, he says, listen, beware of him and obey his voice. Because we're talking about his angel now. Do not provoke him. Now, why would God tell Moses to tell them that? Do not, what? Provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. Now you think about something. God says, now look, I'm going to send this angel. That's me like saying, now listen, I'm going to send Richie over your house. Okay? Now be, and I tell you, I'm sending Richie to your house. He's, I've given him all the money and all the instructions to bring you into the blessing place of your life. Now, don't provoke him. If you provoke him, he may kill you. That's what God was trying to tell him. I'm sending this angel. He ain't like y'all. He don't, he don't live on a fence like y'all live. He ain't lukewarm in this relationship. He is very focused. Be very cautious that you do not provoke him. He will not pardon your transgression. And then he goes on and starts telling. And so turn your Bibles then to Revelation. Let's start in Revelation because that's what we're talking about. And let's talk about what's going on in the news uh, and all this uh, 2016. Let's talk about what the Bible says about what's going on in our country uh, and uh, with President Obama and what's about to happen in September uh, very well, the rapture may happen this month. I ain't saying it's going to, but it might. So uh, you might want to leave some instructions for people who you know ain't going to make it. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, we'll move swiftly. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show. So who wrote the book of Revelation? This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants or bond servants things which must take place this word shortly is quickly so it doesn't mean shortly is a bad translation in my opinion and because it means uh, these things must shortly that you you would think that means in the next few days but actually the word is these things when they take place they'll take place quickly things will start happening so fast and he sent uh, uh, let's see place and he and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimonies of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who what? And those who, the words of this prophecy. So you got to not just 
read it, what do you got to, what do you got to do beyond read it? Underline that word here in your Bible. It's very important that that word becomes the focal point, not read. You've got to not just read, you've got to what? It's very important that you, you get this hearing because if you don't develop the right ear, you will follow the Antichrist. So I'm going to talk to you. And, all this, and, and, and while I'm telling you that, you need to scratch all the eschatology you've been taught for a while, all the church age eschatology, which means study the end times, and you need to come back and really get back in the book because some of the stuff we've been taught, I was taught in the Assemblies of God, you might have been Baptist, you might be Lutheran, all of them have different eschatology theories. And when I was taught, I am all rethinking a lot of what I thought, not because uh, I don't want what I think to happen, but the date of the rapture. I used to believe we were going out on the first, we were going to start the tribulation. I can't uh, unequivocally, passionately say it like I used to say it. So now I'm not sure if we go out in the beginning or we are taken in the middle. Uh, I can't find very much that, uh, that makes me buy into we'll be going through the whole tribulation, but we might go through some of it, which means that we might be seeing some of it right now, and I'll show you that in a second. So he says, right it. So then he starts te- uh, preaching to the church, and he goes into chapter 2, and I'll throw out some verses if they can stay with me, but he starts, says, right to the church of uh, uh, Ephesus, and, and then verse 7, he ends what he talks about the church in verse 7. He was talking about the Nickelodeon, the deeds of the Nickelodeon. But in verse 7, he says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. But then he adds this, and I want you to get this, because this is the theme of what he's teaching in the book. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So he says in Revelation 2, 7, to him that what? overcomes and then he says in verse 17 he's talking to the next church the church of Smyrna and then he says in verse 17 of the same chapter let him who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the church so there's that word hearing again then he says to him who overcomes I will give some of the hidden manna to eat so God's got hidden manna to eat now it's very important that you get this because there's going to be a great poverty and, and a great food shortage that's coming on the earth and I believe the kingdom of God, the overcomers, uh, God's going to give us food that Jesus spoke of all through the Bible. We hear it all the time. I have food you know not. So if you want to get through this. So he says if, you over, if you're an overcomer. So if you're an overcomer, number one, you get the tree of life. He said if number two, he who has an ear and he overcomes, he's going to get the hidden manna to eat. And I will give him a white stone and on that stone a new name written which uh, no one knows except himself. So you're not only going to get food, new manna, you're also going to get identified by God. It's very important that you understand these overcomers because if God doesn't put a signet on your forehead, if he does not seal you on your forehead, and just because you said Romans 9, 10, 9, and 10 doesn't make you sealed, that that was a wrong teaching, we should have never taught it that way because we because I was praying the other day, and the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, there's so many church people who think they're okay who are going to be left behind because of preaching a cheap gospel. He said, you must have the seal. He said, so those that are overcome, I'm going to give you manna. He said, we're not going to be all worried about, we're going to, we're going to, God's going to get us some food. But he's also going to do what? He's going to seal us. He's going to name us. It's very important you understand that because if you try to stand up and use the name and you've not been sealed by the name, you're going to have the same encounter that the seven sons of Sceva had in the book of Acts. Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know. Who are you? So the, Satan doesn't know you because you go to church. That's like pastor said, some of you just standing there doing worship. You're not a worshiper because you show up to the house of God no more than you're a car if you hang out in your garage. And so he says his, he must overcome. What's the theme? Then he says right to the church of uh, Thyatira, and he gets there, verse 26, and he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end to him I will give him power over the nation so you got to overcome when you overcome be an overcomer you're going to get you're going to get the tree of life to be an overcomer you're going to get what you're going to get hidden manna to be an overcomer you're going to get what you're going to get sealed you got to overcome that means you got to go through 
That means you've got to make a stand. It means you've got to walk away from some of your friends. It means you're going to stop running around having premarital sex. Uh, you're going to get solid in your walk with God. Overcome. You're going to get off of drugs. You're going to get off of rebellion. Let me, let me hit the religious people. You're going to quit being unforgiving. You're going to quit giving me reasons why you won't forgive somebody who hurt you in your past. He said he will what? He will overcome. Again, then chapter 3, he said write to the church of Sardis. And he writes to the church of Sardis. And then he gets to verse 12. And he who overcomes, I mean verse 5. Then he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garment. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life. And I will confess his name before my father. I don't want to be whited out in the book of life. Do you? And then he goes on and says, talk to the church of Philadelphia. And he gets done with the church of Philadelphia. He says, right, verse 12, he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of God. What is the theme of all these churches? Shout the theme to me. Tell four or five people, overcome, overcome, overcome. This is the theme. None of these churches are perfect. None of these churches are perfect. So that means you don't have to have a perfect church. But in an imperfect church, you have to have overcomers. He said, I'll make him a pillar of the temple of my God, and he shall go out. No more will I ride on him. I, I will ride on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God and the new Jerusalem. He's going to tag you, man. And then the last church, the church age, here's where we are. Chapter 12, this is going to be a whole series, so we're not going to get it all today, okay? You understand that, right? So you might want to make it Wednesday night. You want to make it a real point to, to try to not miss church for a few, because you might miss the, miss the rapture. Verse, chapter 3, verse 14, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, this is the last day church, the seventh church, these things, says the amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. This is the church right now. This is the trending church. There's no cold. There's no hot and there's no cold. You're just lukewarm. I would wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. This mediocrity worship and this mediocrity praise, mediocre worship, mediocre praise, uh, mediocre attendance, mediocre tithers, uh, mediocre church is lukewarm. Because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor what? I will. How many like coffee? How many like it cold? I'm not a. I'm not a cold. If you cold, you got to get it. You, if you get cold coffee, they got to put ice in it and they got to over sugar it and over milk it, don't they? And real coffee drinkers don't even put cream in it. They just drink it black, don't they? People who drink it black, they always tell me you got to acquire a taste. I've tried it for two weeks and said put sugar and cream in mine. I can't drink it black. So then because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will vomit because you say I am rich. I have become wealthy. I have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. That's how God sees you. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with uh, eye salve, whatever that is, some kind of oil so you blind yourself, that you may see better. I think it's just the anointing, word of God. As many as I love, I rebuke. Okay, this verse is very in important to me, verse 19. As many as I what? I and now, why is that there? Because Jesus said in Matthew 24, he said, In the last days, many will be offended. He says, and fall away. Why will they fall away? Not because God's not in the house, but because they are. Why? Say the word. The offended. You know why you're offended? Can't tell you the truth. You know why Donald Trump's got enemies? Because he is speaking some truth, and nobody wants to hear it. Now, is he going to be president or not? I have no idea. But isn't it crazy that we, that we live in now, and this is the word, and I love Ben Carson when he said this, the greatest curse word right now in America is political correctness. 
Did you know that the word political correctness is just a disguised word for socialism? Did you know that? Did you know that right now we are living so much in the last days? I was watching a 90-year-old lady, almost a 100-year-old lady. She was giving a, a speech uh, in, in to a bunch of young people in college, uh, and she said, uh, how could a Christian nation, this is what she was teaching, how could a Christian nation who was led by the church massacre and kill and gas millions of innocent people and look the other way. She said, I lived in Germany during the Holocaust. And she said, and I lived in a country that, that was just like America, believed in prosperity. I live in a country that was, uh, had democracy as their focus but in democracy we voted in Hitler and by the end of his reign we turned into a brainwashed killing nation and we were good people who became blind she started crying when I was watching it and she said I never dreamed in my lifetime that I'd see it again she says, but all of what happened in Germany in the 30s and 40s has now begun in America that I would never dream would have become part of this country. And she said, the steps that Hitler followed is now in order in the governmental law of the United States of America. That's what she said, and I thought, well, I don't know if that's true or not. How do I know that's true? This is an old lady teaching in a college. How do I know she just ain't trying to make me anti-American? I'm not talking to you about you being mad at any president. What I'm telling you is you better wake up because the Antichrist is on the scene. And I don't want to teach the way we've been teaching it and saying, oh, it's just wickedness. And when there's wickedness, wickedness has been abound since two men got on the earth. So I decided to research and see if there was any laws that were on the books that Hitler did. And I found out that President Obama put these laws on the books in Congress. Look them up for yourself. Law 10990, that the government has the right to take over all modes of transportation, control all highways, and stop all seizures without any vote. That the government, 10 order, Executive Order 10995, that the government has the right to seize and control all communications. Don't tell me that's not true because my friends that own television stations uh, sat down and told me uh, that the law came down through all the television that they had by the year 2000 and something uh, to turn all their stations digital because the government was taking back at all the analog stations, all the analog control. And so I asked the guy, I said, why does the government want the analog uh, control and made all the TV uh, go to digital? He said, because if there's a nuclear ping, uh, all digital will shut down, but no analog will. So the government can shut you down and be blind to what's going on. So you won't know what cities are being took over. Government Order 10997, that the government has the right to take over all electrical power plants, gas, fuel, and minerals without your vote. Don't got to go to Congress. Executive Order 11001, the government has the right to take over all health, educational, and welfare functions without any vote. That means the government can decide now when you get your check. Why does the government want control of all of the health facilities? Why does the government want control of our schools? Because Hitler said, I don't need the adults, I need the children. Did you know that they started singing in Germany 
That lady said one day she went to school and there was a crucifix on the wall. The next day she went to school, the crucifix was gone and a picture of Hitler was on the wall with two swastikas on each side. And the teacher said, we will no longer sing any of the hymns, but from here on out we will swear allegiance to our Fuhrer. I watched video after video after video that shocked me, and you can do your own research, where people, where children in our schools singing songs to President Obama, calling him their savior. Recorded. Whole classrooms. Singing, Obama is our savior. He will bring us change. Obama's not our savior. Reagan's not my savior. Republican ain't a savior. Democrat ain't no savior. And America ain't no savior. I ain't but one savior. His name is Jesus Christ, the son of a living God. I was horrified. One Christian bakery tells a gay couple that they're not going to bake them a cake and put these pictures on the cake of two men kissing or whatever. And the police came in, the, 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 the government got up. What does our government even care, right? And they, and they put the people out of business. However, there's thousands of Islam-owned bakeries who will not bake a cake for the gay population. And I watched a guy who wasn't even a Christian. You can go look it up on YouTube if you don't believe me. Who said, I don't understand how one Christian bakery gets up and says, no, this is against our religious belief. And holds this media and everybody goes after this Christian. He said, but I went out of almost 50 uh, Islam, Muslim-owned bakeries uh, acting like a gay man and said, I'm going to get married to my buddy Jim here and I want this picture on the cake. And they looked me in the face and said, no, 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 you go down there. We don't make these kind of cakes here. But they want, did, do, do you see that in the news? Do you see that on CNN? Have you heard about it? No, because we're in an anti-Christ society. Benjamin Franklin said, when the government fears citizens having guns, you better start fearing that government. What makes this country great is the Second Amendment. I don't care what your opinion is about handguns. Handguns haven't ever killed nobody. People kill people. My friend in, in England said they got rid of all the handguns. He says, so guess what, England, I know a citizen in England has handguns or can own guns. If you own a hunting gun, you got to go through all this stuff, that, I don't know, even a shotgun. He says, so guess what, murder didn't change none, it just changed the stabbing. He says, so now everybody can't shoot nobody, they get knives and stab you to death. Still die. I'd rather you shoot me than stab me. So I said, what y'all going to do? You're going to eat a lot, you no know, steak knives, all knives now are going to get confiscated. And then you know what? We'll go right back to Cain and Abel, and Cain killed Abel with a rock. All rocks are outlawed. If there's a rock in your yard, we're coming to arrest you. Order 10, order 11003. Government has a right to take over all airports and aircrafts. You ain't getting out. Executive Order 11004 allows the housing and financial authority. Here is the big one. This one right here is what Hitler pushed and got it to pass. The government has the right. It allows the housing and financial authority to relocate and establish people where they want them. That's how they went and took the rich Jews and stuck them in the ghettos. And confiscated all their property because the government has control and tells you where you're going to live. Well, we know in the Revelation it says that they're going to take those that won't take the mark of the beast and stick them in camps and cut their heads off. How's that going to happen in America? Because you let this happen. 
just like they did in Germany. Executive Order 11005, the government has the right to take over all railroads, inland waterways, and public storage. Write down some scriptures that you ought to go read. You ought to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You ought to read Daniel chapter 11. You ought to read Daniel chapter 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Daniel chapter 11. Chapter 12. Okay, so where are we, Bishop? What's going on? Well, I've got a few more minutes. I was sitting and listening to Perry Stone talk the other day, and Perry Stone was saying that a preacher was on an airplane, a good, good friend of his was on an airplane, and he's flying somewhere, and he was sitting between a colonel and a, and a doctor. He was sitting there, a colonel over there, a doctor over here, a doctor and a colonel were talking. And the doctor says to the colonel, says, you know where I'm on the way to? He says, no way. He says, I'm on the way to talk to all of the medical leaders over hospitals. He said, what you doing that for? He said, I'm going to train and, and, and teach them. We're going to a conference where we're going to be shown how to put a chip the size of rice into the right hand or foreheads of people. You look on the boards, they'll show you a picture of the chip. They're going to put this. They said that there's a, a man, uh, there's an order in the Obamacare bill that nobody knows about. Watch this. By the year 2017, that chip, if you get free health insurance from the government, you won't continue to get it unless you take this chip in your right hand or under your brow your forehead now the reason why they're going to start it this way is because they can't get everybody to do it so they'll first take all the poor and those that are government supported and if you don't want this chip in your forehead then you got to pay a fee it's called $800 fee this is what the doctor was telling them you're going to you can pay an $800 fee and get a card with this chip in it that's how they're going to fund it now this chip that shows you putting it in right now. This chip they're already putting in dogs. The veterinarians put in dogs. Tell you if that you won't never lose. And here's how they're selling it. You ain't never going to lose your dog. Your dog. We know all your dog's medical history. Well, guess what? They're saying that when they, you can leave them up until we go to the next ones. If I, that's right. But they say that this chip here. This is what this colonel said. When they're going to put this chip in your hand, the only reason why they haven't they, they're putting it off is because certain blood types reject it. Certain blood types won't receive it. So they're trying to figure out a way how to bypass some certain blood types. That sounds like that movie Insurrection and all that, don't it? Divergent. So he says the colonel, sitting there listening to this doctor, the preacher, said he didn't act very interested in it. He acted very irritated. But finally the guy gets up, goes to the restroom, and he leans over to the guy, and he says, what do you do for a living? He says, I'm a preacher. He said, I thought that I saw you reading your Bible. He says, you know, I'm a colonel. A full bird colonel, right? He said, you know what I'm on the way to do, don't you? He said, I don't even like that guy. He said, because they're going to, he says, let me tell you why. He says, let me, he says, why? He says, well, I'm on the way to meet with all the chiefs of staffs and the heads of states of the military. He said, over what? He said, over how we're going to make people take this chip and how we're going to control riots in the country and how to train soldiers to turn on Americans if the government tells us to. And he looked at the preacher in the face and he says, I tell you what I'm doing. He said, what? He said, I'm buying a cabin in the woods and investing in gold. <laughs> he said, that's all I can talk about. Everything else is top secret. This is where you are. This is where you're at. Interesting to me that we are sitting on the preface of something monumental. September 23rd ends the 6,000th year from Adam to now. September 23rd. September 23rd, 2015 is the end of the sixth day of creation. September 23rd, 27, 2015. September 23rd, 2015 is the day... The Jews celebrate Yom Kippur. 
September 23rd, starts the 70th Jubilee of Israel. Interesting to me that Daniel kept using the number 70, and in 2018 will be the 70th anniversary of the Israel as a nation, which is interesting. September 23rd. September 17th, the U.N. ravines, and it's their 70th session. They say when the U.N. comes together this September, the first thing on their agenda is to make Palestine a nation. For Palestine to be a nation, Israel is going to have to give up borders. September 23rd is also the end of summer. Beginning of fall. September 23rd is also the time where they celebrate the paganistic gods celebrate Anno Lucius. The Luciferianistic people. And don't tell me this country is not set up with demonic attack or control. Because sitting in Detroit right now, they built in the middle of the city a God that people come and worship. That's in Detroit. That God, that statue is in Detroit. And they thousands, they say thousands of thousands of people gather around and pray to this God called the God of the pagans. I know Lucius means the return of the fallen light. September 23rd, they're going to meet and they're going to worship and they're going to pray for the return of the fallen light. And Paul said, when he comes, he's coming as an angel of light. Why does Madonna have a concert in New York in September and the theme of her concert is the desecration of the bride and the fall of the fallen angel, the rise of the fallen angel? That's the theme of her concert. Do you know how many young people and old alike are going to be packed in Madison Square Garden in New York? September 23rd. September 23rd, Bishop Francis is going to meet privately with President Obama. Scheduled. I'm not telling you. This is truth. This this, This pope. Can I also add a little thing? Because I'm not trying to make you hate your president or any president. You need to pray. President Obama received an award called the Nobel Peace. What was it called? The Nobel? What? Say it out loud so I know what it is. You know who else won that for this, his executive orders? Hitler. Something's in control of the world's economics and government. And the church needs to get ready for an exodus. Pope Francis who says, mind you, according to the popes of the prophecy, he's the 112th pope because the 111th pope would have to resign for the 112th pope for the 900-year pope prophecy to come to pass. 2013, Pope Benedict resigned. This pope becomes the pope. Now, the Bible said that the Antichrist, and I ain't going to say this is the Antichrist, but the Bible said the Antichrist comes from the, from the Roman regime or from the old Rome. Isn't it interesting that when Pope Francis comes up, he says, call me the bishop of Rome. Out of his own mouth, he said, it, I'm okay with being assassinated as long as it don't hurt. He said it out of his own mouth. Go look it up. He's going to meet with Obama, President Obama, 23rd, and I was reading the list who Obama invites to the Oval Office to meet the Pope of the Catholic Church. One of them is the leader of the transgender organization. The other one is the nun, a nun that believes in abortion, and another one is the homosexual agenda. Going to meet with the head of the Catholic Church. 
It's interesting to me that September 23rd, he's privately going to meet with Obama, but September 24th, he's scheduled to speak to the Senate and the Congress, the first pope in history who has ever spoken to this country's government will be this pope. wonder what he's going to talk about. wonder what he's coming up to talk to all of our leaders, uh, because September 25th, he'll be sitting and speaking to the U.N., first pope that's ever addressed the United Nations. What's he coming to talk about? What's so interesting? What's so interesting in the Catholic Church uh, that he needs feels the need to speak to the leaders of a country called America and into the leaders of the world called the United Nations? What's he coming to talk about? World peace. Jesus said, "When they start talking peace, peace, know that utter destruction is on the way." September. blood moon you know the blood moon is this all right if I talk to you like this I didn't pay much attention to the blood moons because I don't like scare tactics I don't like people trying to put fear in me but I decided to say well I've this stuff just can't is this coincidence is this coincidental that Anna Lucia is being celebrated in the same month? Matter of fact, what really blew me away is when I found out that most theologians believe that Jesus might have been conceived in the month of September. He wasn't born in December. You count nine months off, he was born sometime between May and between June and July. So you take September and count nine months off. That's where they believe. So we're in the very month that the seed of the deliverer might have been conceived. Are we about to see the seed of the deliverer come again and take his bride? Now you might feel a little fear. It'll get your heart right. Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. Pure don't mean you live, you're, you're perfect, you're holy. That's not what the pure heart means. The pure heart means that your heart has been set free from guilt and shame. Blessed are the heart that's not guilty. For that heart shall see God. Well, I didn't pay much attention to the blood moons until I started seeing when they showed up. First blood moon showed up, 1492. Every time the blood moons have showed up on the earth since the, since the beginning of these blood moons, something's happened to the Jewish nation. So I looked it up, looked up 1492, 1493 was the first blood moons. 1492, what happened in 1492? Columbus, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? 1492. Did you know that in 1492 when the first blood moon showed up that all of the Jews were exiled out of Europe? Didn't know that, did you? Next blood moon showed up, 1948. 1947, 48, the next blood moon showed up. When the blood moon showed up, Israel became a nation. The next blood moons came up, started in 1967 and 68 was the next blood moons that came around in cycle. And in 1967 and 68 was the Six-Day War where all Iran, Iraq, and, and Egypt all came against Israel who had, didn't have bullets, didn't have enough guns, didn't have enough planes. And in six days, God showed up and turned that army on itself. And God delivered his people, and that's when the borders got stretched from the, and, and they took over the Gaza Strip, and they took that, that, that valley and made a place where it's defensible. This is why Israel will not give up that valley. It's not going to happen. If they go back to the 67 borders, uh, that gives the enemy an easy way to get in. It'll be only nine miles wide, Israel, in that area. 1967, 68, the blood moon show up. Here comes a six-day war. Here comes the enemy that is well equipped to beat Israel. And, it, and Israel beat their enemy dropping Coke bottles out of airplanes that were empty. And they whistled and sounded like bombs. And the enemy, God took the noise of empty Coke bottles and sent it into the enemy's ear and they thought they were sending thousands of missiles were falling out and they backed up and took off and ran and glass just splattered on the desert. And a great wind sandstorm came 
all these tanks were lined up to shoot. A great sandstorm came onto the desert and blinded the tanks, and they began to shoot one another, and Israel hardly fired a shot. In six days, they took the boundaries. The next blood moons that we're seeing right now are coming up was 2014, 2015. The last blood moon will be within September 28th, 29th. It's the last blood moon. Isn't it crazy? The Pope is here to want to talk about world peace. Obama wants to, it says, I don't care what, the, what, did you know they did a poll and most of America does not agree with the Iran deal, but he's going to push the Iran deal, he said. He don't care. He's going to push an executive order and it's going to happen. In the history of the UN, a president has never sat in the chairman's office. They've been offered it, but most presidents said it's too powerful to sit as the most powerful nation. But President Obama sits as the chairman of the United Nation right now. That means he's going to control the greatest army. The world's army is sitting right now under President Obama, who's got all these executive orders in there. If there's a 2016 election, I'd probably be shocked. Because written on the books in 1937, Theodore Roosevelt, or Roosevelt, one of the Roosevelt wrote in a law under the Great Depression and put our country in a state of national emergency. And our, our Constitution says if we're in a state of national emergency that we don't have to live by constitutional law, that the president has extreme power. It's too much power for one guy. So for 85 years, we haven't been under constitutional law. This is why people say, how can a president do so much unconstitutional stuff and get away with it? Because it's not a law. Because 85 years, we've been under unconstitutional government. Look it up. If you don't believe me, look it up. Go up and look that there's an agenda that's been under, underneath, not, and we've been lied to, and our, and our media's lying to us, uh, and our leaders are lying to us. That's why we need to get back into the Word of God and get the only person who doesn't lie to us. His name is Jesus Christ. And we need to stop fighting one another and stop being racist and stop being angry. Jesus said there'll be lawlessness on the earth in that day. He said men will rise up against you. There'll be lawlessness. I've never seen such a time of lawlessness. And if you read Matthew 24, if you read Matthew 24, he said there'll be lawlessness everywhere. That word lawlessness means that this is what it means, lawlessness, contrary to or without regard to any law. Have you ever seen people tell proof? There was a time when a police officer pulled you over. I, you, I, yes, sir. Now they're like, no. They're telling the police officers, no. And then they want to know why they got tased. Is there, if, well, you just don't understand. Some of these police officers, oh, there's been bad police officers since they, since they started the officers. <laughs> that does not mean all of them are bad. The word lawless means unbridled, unruly, unrestrained. This is what he says in the last days, unrestrained, reckless passion. I've never seen. You want to talk about, you go and read the statistics right now of babies being born in this country with, uh, unwed. Passionless recklessness. Reckless passion. Here are the four or five words that describe this word lawlessness in the Greek. Chaos, confusion, disorder, irresponsibility, terror. He said in the last days there will be lawlessness. What if, what, what if the rapture? I mean, what if? I mean, never before in history has all the signs lined up like it has right now. You would never dream America would be where it is right now, would you? I know, my, I know the old people wouldn't. Sitting in Switzerland, let me close with this. We're going to come back Wednesday. We're going we're gonna to draw a timeline. I'm going to show you some things that need to be prepared you need to come listen if you just if you just don't want to go in the rapture you ought to come at least i'll tell you how to survive the tribulation and i'll tell you where i stashed all my stuff you can go to my house and get all you want let me tell you this story real quick and let me close with this right here and i'm going to show you a picture i'm going to just blows my mind my friend calls me up last year and he says he was riding home he had had a, been a powerful prayer meeting he's met bishop kyle he's riding home in england he said it was, it was terrible raining, very dark. He said he was riding, and all of a sudden, he said, uh, an evil, a pr 
presence came all over his car. And he said he he knew he sort of was crazy. He said and and um, he said he went when he and he he got home that night and he turned to get his briefcase. He said and it, he had put it behind his seat. He said that when he got home, the briefcase was on the other side of the car, and there were wet footprints in the back seat of his car. But nothing there. He said, well, it kind of, he said it kind of freaked him out. So he said the next night he goes to a prayer meeting. He said it was more powerful than the other night. He said the car fell. He said we prayed. We prayed. He said we prayed most of the night, Bishop. He said on the way home, passing this place. He said, he said I need to tell you about this place. He said this, this place that I'm going through, this little part of my city, is where all the witches and the witch companies are working. Very evil. Wicked and evil. Huge thing. He said when I crossed this, the, the, that place, he said, I felt that spirit again. And all he said, it was just, he said, it was just horrible feeling comes over me. He says, fear like I've never felt in my life. He says, and my car goes dead. And it, I pull it over. He said, it's raining outside. It's terrible. He says, and I'm, 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 and I'm, and I'm feeling fear. And he said, I look in the rearview mirror, and the man is sitting behind, sitting in my back seat. And he says, and he's a dark figure with red eyes. He said, I said, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over my life right now. He said, I felt death. And he said, who are you? He says, my name is Abaddon. And I'm about to be released and disappears. Get ready for some things you can't handle. And he calls me up. Didn't he, Mary? He's all freaked out. I got to talk to you. I got to talk to you. What, what, what? He said, and he tells me the story I'm telling you. He says, and he says his name is Abaddon. You ever heard of that? Have you ever heard that name? I said, yeah, it's in Revelation. And if you went to Revelation chapter 9, verse 11, it said, and they had as the king over their angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon. But that's not what gets me, because when I read it to him, he goes, oh, Lord. Revelation 19, 11. He said, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in the Greek, his name is Apollonia. Revelation 9 11. Sorry. Revelation 9 11. It says his name was Apollonia. Which? Apollonia. Which is the Greek god Apollos. Well, so I uh, told you about that thing called the CERN in Switzerland. Did I tell you about that? There's this plant in Switzerland called the CERN. It's 17 miles below the earth. Look at it. I mean, 300 feet below is 17 miles round. It takes almost a year to crank up this thing. They documented that they cranked it up one time, this CERN, and they, they feel that when they cranked up, it was so powerful, it was the same time that earthquake hit Japan. They're afraid that they caused that. They shut it down. They said, but when they will open it up, it's colliding these particles called the guard particles. They're trying to take the particles and, and send them in opposite directions so fast that when they collide, the guard particles will meet and explode. They said, when we cranked it up, he, they said a black hole began to open up. And it says they saw faces looking through it, and they shut it down. It scared them. This is no science fiction. This is not a sci-fi movie right there. That's real. Now they're cranking it up. Guess when they're going to run it? This month. In the office of the CERN, in the front of you walk in, they have a statue to the goddess Shiva. The Hindu god Shiva of creation and destruction. That's in front of the CERN. Before they crank it up, they do a whole Hindu demonic dance. All these biophysicists and doctors. And they do these ungodly dances and worship this God of chaos and destruction. But that ain't what got me. They built this plant. Over an ancient hill. When I looked up the ancient temple, I began to pray. <laughs> this was built over the ancient temple of Apollos, of Abaddon. 
they say that they're going to release a black hole. They're going to open up a black hole, and what they're after is dark matter. They say if dark matter comes out of this hole, it will take over the psyche of men after they're gone. They said, what do you think is going to happen if you open that hole? They said, we think something might come out of it. Well, my Bible said it's something is coming out of it. Scorpion-like creatures that torment men for six months. I don't want my children in. got to go. I hope I see you next Sunday. Not that I mean you come back. That means I might see you somewhere else. Every state in the United States that the scientists say they they feel and, and, and believe there's portals to every state. Portals in, into a new dimension. Some states have three and four and five and six. They say the biggest portal that they believe that's on the earth is in Jerusalem. And then my Bible says we're going out of that portal. It's where God kissed the earth in the Old Testament. That's why Satan wants that place so bad. Why does Satan want Jerusalem? There's nothing there. There is there. There's a dimensional portal where he's going to try to bring the giants and the immortals back that's in Genesis chapter. Armageddon is a battle between these two armies. Gee, no one in history has God ever fought humans. So why is God going to send Jesus and an army of saints to fight humans and his soldiers and his world? No, he's coming to fight the old dragon. And he's bringing his church with him, you and I who have been raptured. And the Bible said out of his mouth comes a sharp sword. I think it's all going to be about voices called the voice of the dragon. Because the Antichrist is going to have a Listen, he's going to do signs and wonders. Like a sheep no more. And I don't want you to miss this thing. I don't want you to miss it. But I want you to be informed. Now, all I'm telling you is what I've studied. You want to find it? Well, study it yourself. I'm not trying to make you a Republican. I ain't trying to make you hate Democrats. I want you to do is become evangelistic. I don't want your kids left here. I don't want you left here. I don't want anybody I know left here. I want to go when the time comes. Who wants to go with Bishop? Now, why don't you lift the other hand real quick. Let's talk to the king that's going to take us. Father, we're going to come and learn this stuff. We're going to teach these end times. We're going to talk about some stuff here in the next few days. Now, God, I know there's fear on us. We ought to be afraid a little. That fear is making us know we want to be right with you. And I want everybody to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, I'm convicted right now. I don't want to miss your coming. I want to be ready. So I'm asking you, Jesus, forgive me for being unforgiven and bitter. Come in my heart, Jesus. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. Take off of me all these lusts for wrong things. I want to lust for you, Jesus. Clean your church. Clean your bride, Lord. We're ready for your coming. We're ready for your coming. Lord, until you come, bless your church. Help us, Lord. Evangelize our homes, our children. We want everybody we know to come with us. In Jesus' name. I pray this prayer. I sanctify my mind, my heart, my lineage. I swear allegiance to only one king, only one savior. His name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He is my deliverer, my healer, my blesser. He is who I serve. I will not serve another. In Jesus' name. Now give God praise all over this church. And say, I love you, Jesus. Now I want you to shout and say, come quickly, Lord.
Somebody said to me, said, I said this the other day, I said, Lord, I, Lord, everything, you know, what if I don't want you, what if I don't want you to come right now? What if, what if everything's good and, because I've heard some people say that to me. He said, boy, you sure do love the world, son. He said, I'll leave you if you want me to. I said, let's retalk that conversation. He said, you know what they were praying First church, Mary and I, the Lord is good. The, the blessing of prosperity also is dangerous. Because when we're prosperous, we don't pray for a coming rain, do we? But when I was in Africa, and I saw a baby sleeping outside, that was his bedroom. No, no roof, no air conditioning, flying flies. His mama, she was holding him, saying, Mary Martha. <laughs> we need to refocus on prosperity. We need to take the city of Jesus. Because it's not what I do that's going to hurt you. I can be forgiven, Lord. I can be made whole. I'm going to be whole. I prayed it because I was afraid. Good, you keep praying it. <laughs> I went to the altar every Sunday when they preached on rapture when I was a kid. <laughs> I said, Lord, man, I even had, I even got rapture clothes ready. I said, and they said, you're not going to take your clothes. I said, oh, Lord. Put the seed envelope in front of you and sow your seeds today. Sow your offering today. Make it an offering of love. Make it an offering, uh, make it an evangelistic offering. We did pay a Romeo's rent. This six-month rent got paid. Give God praise. Let, let's get ready to go. I know it's really somber in here. It's all right. I want you to think about it. We're going to have some 55-gallon bucket drums out in the foyer here in the next uh, week. Uh, we're going to want you to start bringing good clothes and shoes, and we want you to start bringing, you know, Tylenols. And I'm going to get a list of stuff that we need to start bringing for 12 months. And every one time we fill them up, we're going to send them to uh, New York, and then we're going to put it on a crate and send it to Africa and send it to this church in Ghana because we're a part of that church building this this huge church. And then I'll be letting you know what date we're going back next year. And y'all can start signing up, saving up money. And I want to bring as many of you that want to go with me and help pass out the food and the clothes and do the medical and preach and do some church planting. And then uh, I'm going to fly. It's funny that I'm paying for, uh, this is crazy. I'm going to pay for uh, Romeo and his wife's ticket to fly over to the conference. It's just a four-hour flight. When my friend Dominic said, if you'll fly them here, I'll pay the whole week for their hotel room. For the, our pastor and our labor center to do that and this conference next year, and we'll be there to love on them and pray for them. So we're going to do some stuff crazy, ain't we? But let's not fly over the mission field, okay? Because <laughs> across the street's a mission field. Amen? You're going to work in, a, in about 12 hours, 12, 12 years, something's going to be at work, right? There's a mission field. And I ain't telling you to go home and start screaming, Jesus is telling y'all are going to hell. <laughs> Share the love. Don't, 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 beat the, don't beat the love. Don't beat it in them. Love it in them, okay? Hold your seat up. Father, we're sowing some, are sowing some great seeds today. This seed is focused just as our dedication to your temple, your house, your church. We're giving because we want your church to be blessed. So we pay bills and we help others. And we buy land. We bought land and then we build a building. We're going to build a debt-free, God. We don't need to owe nobody. We don't need to owe the Antichrist anything in the name of Jesus. I ask you to bless every giver that's watching and every giver here. I ask for a hundredfold return and favor on everything they do this week. We come back, God, Wednesday and be ready to learn some nuts and bolts of the end times. Let us come ready, right, and listen, and to repent. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hug somebody. Stand to your feet. Yes. Membership class tonight. If you missed last Sunday, it's okay. You can uh, still still make it. We want you to join the church. So be here tonight at 6. Is it 6, April? At 6, uh, the members. Uh, also, I can't wait for our new website to go up. We'll have new membership forms on there. Hug somebody. Bless somebody. Tell somebody. Say, I know you're going to make it in the rapture with me. I know it's kind of quiet. It's all right. You that are watching, we love you. If you're not going to, you can bring your seat and lay them up here. Or on the way out, an usher will collect your offering. 
and uh, we thank you for being faithful to your giving. Those that are watching, thank you for sowing, and we're, we're just talking. These are just thoughts right now. We're not saying a rapture's happening September 23rd, but I'm ready if it does, and if, if it don't, I'm going to keep living and be blessed just like you are. But we are at a prefaces. We are at a, at a sensitive time, and we need to just be ready and be listening and be watching and know that the hour is nigh. But I like what the Bible says, that our redemption draweth nigh. So don't be afraid, but say that prayer that we prayed just a few minutes ago. Know that God's going to bless you everywhere you go. And thank you for giving online. I'll see you Wednesday and talk to you. Men of valor, I can't wait to be with you uh, this weekend. Love you. Take us away, guys.